guys, welcome to this page of the notes. What we're going to do is we've been asked to solve this quadratic by graphing. It is in standard form. It is equal to zero. We need to set up an xy table and we do that by finding the axis of symmetry. So x is equal to negative b over 2a. Well, let's go ahead and do that. My b is a negative 6. Negative times negative would be a positive 6. My a is a 1. 2 times 1 would be 2. And a positive 6 divided by 2 would be 3. Let's go ahead and set up that xy table. 3 is going to be the first value in there. And let's see, I, it looks like I went all the way to a negative 1. So 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. And I went all the way to a positive 7. 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. I plug a 3 in for my values of x. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. You should come up with a negative 5, which represents my vertex. Remember, these guys are going to be mirror images on either side of the vertex. So I only have to go one half. I'll know what the rest of them are. I'll do these guys because they'll be a little bit easier to do math with. I plug a 2 in for all my values of x, and I wind up with a negative 4. Minus, minus 4, and minus 4. Go ahead and plug a 1 in. When you plug in a positive 1, I wind up with a negative 1. Plug in is 0. Those first two terms drop out. You should get a positive 4 and a positive 4. Oh, please note also that this then represents my y-intercept. And one last one. If I plug in a negative 1, again, don't fat finger something on your calculator, and you should get a positive 11, which is actually going to be a little bit too big for my graph. So I probably won't include those in my graph. But now here's my issue. Remember, I'm looking, I asked you to solve, I'm looking for the roots. I want to know where does this guy cross the x-axis. And I know I cross the x-axis when y is equal to 0. But I don't have any zeros in my y column. So I'm going to need to find consecutive integers. And I do that by looking for a change in signs. Here we go. Negative, 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 positive. There's my change in sign. The only way I can go from being at y equals a negative 1 to y equals a positive 4 is if somewhere between these guys I cross the x-axis. I got a 0 somewhere, somewhere between right? Between 0 and 1, I have a 0. So I need these guys right here. Those are going to represent my consecutive integers. Let's go the other way. Negative, 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 positive. There it is right there. I see my change in sign. The only way I go from being at a negative 1 to a positive 4 is if I cross the x-axis somewhere between those guys. So my consecutive integers will be the 5 and the 6. Let me go ahead and write those consecutive integers for you guys. We'll do it right over here since I'm definitely going to ask you for them. Consecutive Remember, the abbreviation for integer is Z, so consecutive integers. Uh, and here they are. My first consecutive integer is going to occur somewhere between 0 and 1. So my x will be greater than 0, but less than 1. My other 0, my other consecutive integers, are going to be 5 and 6. So that other 0 will occur somewhere greater than 5 but less than 6. Let's go ahead and graph these guys. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once I graph, I should be able to confirm what I just found right here. 2, negative 4. And uh, let's see, it'd be uh, 4, negative 4. Uh, 1, negative 1. 5, negative 1. 
six four. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, zero four. And six four. And let's go ahead and connect those dots. And again, what you should see, hopefully if you can't see it on mine, yours will be a little clearer as you're taking these notes. But please notice that my graph crosses the x-axis somewhere between positive 5 and positive 6, which is exactly what I've given you right here. And on the other side, my graph crosses the x-axis somewhere between 0 and positive 1, which is exactly what I've given you right here. What is the exact solution? I don't really care, not what I asked you for. What are the consecutive integers? That's what you can pull off of your table, right? And you find it by finding that change in sign. Negative to positive, consecutive integers. Negative to positive, consecutive integers. Once again, of course, I'll ask you for the vertex, 3 minus 5, and I'll ask you for the y-intercept, 0. Four. I love doing these problems. Consecutive integers, so much fun. Let's go ahead and try another one. I've got for you right here. Again, check to make sure that the quadratic is in standard form, and it is. So let's just jump right into this. I need to set up an XY table, but I need my uh, axis of symmetry first. Okay, well, uh, let's see. My B is a 4. So I'd have a negative 4. My a is a negative 1. So negative 4 divided by a negative 2 should be a positive 2. Let's go and set up that table. All right, let's see here. I started at 2, and it looks like I went all the way to negative 2. So uh, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and in the other direction, uh, it looks like I went to a positive 6. So 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. At this point, we'll just go ahead and start plugging in my x values. 2 gets plugged in for x. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. Should get a positive 3, and that's going to represent my vertex. Let's keep going. If I plug in a positive 1, and again, don't fat finger something on your calculator, you should get 2. 0, plug in a 0, those terms are going to drop out. I wind up with a negative 1. Plug in a negative 1, again, don't fat finger something on your calculator, you should get minus 6. And plug in a negative 2, you'll wind up with a minus 13, which actually isn't going to fit on my graph, so I'm probably going to leave those ones out. Now let's go ahead and find the rest of my stuff. Well, I know that when x is 0, I cross the y, uh, uh, I cross the y axis, which is my y intercept. And my roots, my solutions, will be when y is equal to 0. But I take a look at my table, I don't have any zeros in the y column. So it looks like we're going to need consecutive integers again. And in order to find consecutive integers, i got to find where the sign changes. So here we go. Positive, positive, negative. So it looks like somewhere right here, I'm going to have a zero. Sorry, that z got a little weird. Fix it. There we go. Somewhere right in between there, I have a zero, so my consecutive integers are going to be those guys. Zero and one. I feel like we've gotten zero and one as consecutive integers a lot. Trust me, that is purely coincidental. Zero and one will not always be your consecutive integers. Let's go the other way. Positive, positive, negative. There's my sign change. So somewhere between these guys, I'm going to have a zero. My consecutive integers are going to be 3 and 4. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and write our consecutive integers. All 
I will have two of them. My first one occurs somewhere between 0 and 1. So x is greater than 0 but less than 1. And my second one occurs somewhere between 3 and 4. So x is greater than 3 but less than 4. Let's go ahead and graph this to confirm what we just found. 2, 3. 2, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. 3, 2. Uh, 0, negative 1. And 4, negative 1. And then we're at negative 1, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we'll be at 5, negative 6. Go ahead and graph that guy by connecting those points. And again, if you can't clearly see it on my graph, hopefully it's a lot clearer on yours. But my graph, my graph definitely crosses the x-axis somewhere between 0 and a positive 1, which is exactly what I get here, and definitely crosses somewhere between a positive 3 and a positive 4, which is exactly what I get right there. Guys, hopefully at this point you now feel comfortable with solving a quadratic by graphing it. Again, make sure you put it in standard form. Find your axis of symmetry and use that to set up a table. Once you've got the table, everything comes from the table. Make sure you go slow and do this correctly. I, um, the only things I'll ask you for will come directly off the table. The vertex, the y-intercept, the zeros or the roots, right, comes right off of the table. And then if you don't wind up getting zeros in the y columns, being able to locate those consecutive integers um, by finding the change in signs. Guys, I really enjoyed this section. I love graphing quadratics uh, and finding all of this interesting information about them. Thanks so much for joining me on this set of videos. I'll see you guys next time.